Greetings, physics enthusiasts. Welcome to AP Physics 2, Unit 6, Lesson 4. We are continuing to study light. And why, oh why, do we have rainbow colored pens there? Well, you know, colors are pretty. But uh, these rainbow colored pens in order, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, are related to today's topic, which is called dispersion. So we'll get to what is going on soon. But we have said in previous videos that when there is a boundary separating medium one from medium two, medium one where light travels at some speed, which is related to its index of refraction, medium two related to the speed at which light travels through it, and so when light travels from medium one to medium two, when transmission happens, when transmission happens, it turns out that the light can change speed. Light travels at different speeds in different media. So if n2 is greater than n1, this is a larger index, this is a smaller index, that means that um, v2 is less than v1. A higher index corresponds to traveling more slowly. Mm. And if it slows down, then not only does the speed change, but the wavelength changes too. So we're not going as fast. So we get a smaller wavelength, which means that wavelength two is less than wavelength one. So this would be wavelength two, small. This would be wavelength one, large. All right, now the frequencies are the same. The frequency in medium one is equal to the frequency in period in medium two. Remember that. Um, and I talked about that in a previous video. But so these are some great relationships that you shouldn't have to memorize. You should just be able to think your way through those. So make sure that you can think your way through that. Now let me draw the picture again. We have medium one and medium two, but what happens if the light is traveling so that its angle of incidence is not zero? Here, the angle of incidence is zero. This is not the angle of incidence. The angle of incidence is not 90 degrees. The angle of incidence is the angle between the ray and the normal, and the ray and the normal are on top of each other here, so the angle of incidence is zero. Here, the angle of incidence is not zero. And we often draw this dotted line indicating a continued direction. But if we slow down in medium two, such that V2 is small compared to V1, meaning index two is greater than index one, then we're going to take a different path that is closer to the normal. We're not going to take this path here. This would be if we speed up in medium two. This is where we go if we slow down in medium two. This is where we go if we sped up. This is where we go if we slow down. And that change of direction, not the dotted line, but this other direction, is called refraction. Refraction sometimes happens upon transmission. There's no refraction here because the angle of incidence is zero. There's also no refraction if N2 and N1 happen to be the same number. But if N2 and N1 are not the same number, there will be a change in direction upon transmission. That change in direction is called refraction. Now, here's the fancy schmancy thing. If this light is white light, meaning it contains lots of different wavelengths, then, huh, look at me getting out the colored pens. It turns out that different colors of light or different wavelengths of light are going to change direction different amounts. So the red light would change direction slightly less than the yellow light changes direction. 
Oh, orange. Let's see, red, orange, yellow, orange actually should go right in between those two. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, violet, whatever you want to call it. And so we get this spreading out. We get this rainbowization, if you will, of the light. And the reason we get a rainbowization of light is they, they bend different amounts. Why? Because it turns out the index of refraction is not so much a number, a constant, but it is a function of the wavelength. N is a function of wavelength. And these have different wavelengths and therefore the index for this medium is slightly different for the different wavelengths. Wow. So when refraction happens upon transmission, with transmission, it turns out that different wavelengths change direction a slightly different amount and they change in order. And as we go from red to purple, the purple changes direction the most, the red changes direction the least. All right, and that's always gonna be true. The red changes direction the least, the purple changes direction the most, and then they go in order there. So that is dispersion. Dispersion is this spreading out. All the colors were going together along the same path, and then they spread out and they all take their own individual path based on wavelength. Because wavelength uh, index of refraction is a function of wavelength. All right, well, isn't that fun? And it's called dispersion or rainbowization, which is a word I just made up, not a real word. I wonder if there's any videos where I do not make up a word. That would be fun to see. Um, I hope I made up a new word in every video. Super pretty. And if you just redraw this and remember it, it is important to remember that purple changes direction the most. And that'll be uh, the answer. It'll help us answer a question on my sample problem in just a few minutes. So here's a sample problem that we can look at from... 2014, which sounds like forever ago to you because you're young and sounds really recent to me because I'm old. Um, but this is from 2014. It was on the AP Physics B exam. It was the last question that year. AP Physics B, that of course doesn't exist anymore. Anyway, we have a light source and then this is, is an eye that's an observer. And so and the observer's just right up there by that light source. So the light's gonna shine down and it's gonna reflect back up and this person's gonna say, oh, look at that reflection I see. So the light is gonna shine down uh, the, through the air. And then there's this thin layer of oil. Some of the light will reflect off the oil and get up to the observer. Some of the light will be transmitted into the oil and then reflect off this probably glass plate and then come up and hit the observer's eye. So this observer is going to receive light twice, the reflected off the oil and the reflected off the plate. So that's the big idea here. Now let's read what they have to say. A thin layer of transparent oil is placed on top of a transparent plate. So the oil is on top of the plate. And when you read a problem, it's really a good idea if there's a diagram to take every sentence and see what's going on in the diagram. If there's not a diagram, try drawing one. So uh, there's air and then there's a plate and the oil is on top of the plate, separating the air from the plate. The oil film is then illuminated by white light shining on the oil's surface. So when it says white light, that's when you start to think, aha, there's all these different colors of light in there, but they're all traveling on the same path when the light is white. To an observer standing right next to the light source and looking straight down on the oil film. So there's our observer. The oil film appears green, corresponding to a wavelength of 520 nanometers in air. 
So in other words, some of the light reflects, some of the light comes down here and reflects. And if the light appears green, that means we have constructive interference for a wavelength of 520 times 10 to the minus ninth meters, nanometers, 10 to the minus ninth meters. Does that make sense? We have constructive interference for that wavelength. And the oil has an index of refraction of 1.52. Okay, let's see what they want to know. Determine the frequency of the green light in the air. All right, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that you have room to see the problem and what I'm writing. So for letter A, I know the wavelength for the green light. They want to know the frequency. Remember this equation? Wave speed equals wavelength times frequency. Sound familiar? And then the speed, since they say N, the index for air is one. That means they're saying the speed of light in air is really close to the speed of light in a vacuum. C equals the wavelength 520 times 10 to the minus ninth times the frequency. And C is 3 times 10 to the eighth. 520 times 10 to the minus ninth times the frequency. So I can solve for the frequency. It's just going to be 3 times 10 to the eighth divided by 520 times 10 to the negative ninth. And that's going to be a really big number. It's going to be sometime around 10 to the 20th. 3 times 10 to the 8th. I'm going to divide by 520 times 10 to the negative 9th. And, oh, I, I divided. Um, I got, when I did it in my head, I got it slightly wrong. I'll come see you in five minutes. Okay, it's going to be longer than five minutes, but he'll wait. Um, anyway, I did it wrong in my head, but I was, Sort of close-ish. 5.77 times 10 to the 14th. So there is my, oops, there is my frequency. Does it have a unit? Yes. Do you remember the unit for frequency? You could say Hertz, capital H, small z, but you know I prefer S to the minus one because what's cooler than a negative exponent? All right, that had nothing to do with dispersion, so let's continue on. I hope that made sense. Letter B. Determine the frequency of the green light in the oil film. Oh my goodness, in the oil film. Well, in the oil film, we have a different wavelength and we have a different velocity. So we have a different wavelength. We have a different velocity. But do we have a different frequency? Trick question. Trick question. Remember, the frequencies are the same in the two different media. Uh-huh. So B, you just write 5.77 times 10 to the 14th S to the minus one. All right. Now, this is just a test taking tip for you. Um, the people who are going to be scoring your exams are going to be scoring B all by itself. And they're going to be giving you points for B if you get it right, even if you get A wrong. So even if you got A wrong, you had some crazy number here, as long as you took that same crazy number and wrote it here for B, the point is going to be for having the same answer for B as for A. In fact, even if you don't know how to do A, you're like, goodness gracious, that just seems really challenging. I don't know. But if you're like, oh, but I know the frequency should be the same. Oh, but I don't know the answer to A. If you write, if you write nothing for A, and for B, you write the frequency will be the same in the air and the oil you'll get all the points for part B. So do read through uh, a problem all the way because maybe there's a part later on that you know the answer to. Uh, you can get credit for that. And you, you don't even have to have the previous answers. You can just say what you would do with them. Same, same frequency. Letter C, calculate the wavelength of the green light in the oil film. So I went over this in the, uh, the previous video, but look at this. The wavelength in medium two is going to be smaller, right? And so we could just set up a proportion. 
I want the ratio of the ends to equal the ratio of the wavelengths. See how that works? And here's the tricky part. The greater index gives me the smaller wavelength, bigger index, smaller wavelength. So I want the numbers to be in not one over two, one over two, but one over two, two over one. And that is that the ratio of the indices should give me the ratio of the wavelengths, but I don't want the big index to have the big wavelength. I want the big index to have the small wavelength. So let's just put in our numbers. N1 is one, N2 is 1.52. Uh, wavelength two is what we're looking for. Calculate the wavelength in the oil film. And wavelength one was given 520 times 10 to the minus ninth. And so let's see what we get. I've got 520 times 10 to the minus ninth divided by 1.52. 520 times 10 to the minus ninth divided by one. Oh, I divided by two. Uh, divided by 1.52. And that gave me 3.42. Or 342. 342 times 10 to the minus ninth. Or, oops. Here we go. 342 nanometers. 342 nanometers. which is a smaller wavelength than 520. And that's what I was looking for. Okie dokie. You can also do 520 over 342 just to check. 520, 342, oh, 1.52. Here's my 1.52. So that's how we do parts A and B and C. A little bit of a math there. Now, let's look at part D. The oil film thickness, this distance right here, the oil film thickness. So this is starting to be like those thin films that we talked about in the last video. The oil film thickness is half the wavelength you found in part C. 342 Half of 342 is 150, 160, 171. So it's half of that, 171 nanometers. Is the index of refraction of the plate greater or less or equal to that of the oil? Mm. So is this index more than 1.52, less than 1.52, or equal to 1.52? And, you know, glass plates tend to have indices of refraction of around 1.5. Oh, so that's not what they're asking us for. You know, do you know if plates have indices that are greater? But remember when I told you that when reflection happens, sometimes there is a PCUR, a phase change upon reflection. And that happens, we have a phase change upon reflection when index two, what we're reflecting off of, is greater than index one. And so for this, 1.52 is greater than one. There was a phase change upon reflection there. And then down here, there might be a phase change upon reflection if this index is more than 1.52, n equals one, n equals 1.52, n equals question mark. Now it turns out that the path difference delta, delta equaling an integer number of wavelengths corresponds to constructive interference and delta equaling an integer plus one half number of wavelengths corresponds to destructive interference. We learned that 
last time. And that is true. Um, uh, path difference equaling an integer number of wavelengths gives us constructed interference. If there's no phase changes or if there's an even number of phase changes, right? Here's no phase changes. Here's an even number of phase changes. Gets us back where we started. But if there's an odd number of phase changes, one or one, two, three, then we switch from being constructive interference to destructive interference. So they said that this is half a wavelength, which means this plus this delta equals twice the thickness. So we've got the green light's wavelength, the green light's wavelength again. We have a full wavelength. So that should just be something like this. An integer number of wavelengths gives us constructive interference. But there's a phase change here. Well, if there's one and only one phase change, then that would give us destructive interference. So it must be that I have a phase change upon reflection here as well, meaning this index N3 must be greater than 1.52. So that's how you think through that. How are we doing on time? Oh, okay. Part, last part. Now this is awfully pretty. Part E. Notice that the I has now moved to the right. What's going on there? As the observer starts moving to the right away from the light source, so the observer has moved away, as shown in the figure above, the film changes color. What? So we're no longer having constructive interference for the green light. For some reason, we're either going to have constructive interference for yellow, orange, red, or for blue, purple. Huh. The film appears to change color. Describe the color change. So you're either going to say, it stops being green and gets blue and then purple. Or you're going to say it stops being green and gets yellow and orange and red. So let's see which one it is. And explain why. So what's going on is this is what was going on at the beginning. And this is what's going on now. And do you see that when we travel in this diagonal path, that's a larger path difference. This, boom, boom, is a short path difference. This, to make it more extreme, is a longer path difference. So delta, the path difference, is increasing. We've got a greater path difference, which is going to correspond to constructive interference for a longer wavelength. So which of these, starting from green, they gave you green because it's kind of in the middle. Which of these has a longer wavelength? Well, violet, here's how I remember it. I remember the phrase ultraviolet and infrared. Ultra means more, which means this has a greater frequency. Violet has a large frequency and therefore a small wavelength. So violet looks like this with a small wavelength. You can't see that. There it is. And red infra is a prefix that means less than and it refers to the frequency. So this is a smaller frequency or a larger wavelength. So red looks like this, larger wavelength. And of course, I also made that a greater amplitude. So that's, I mean, it's fine, but it makes you wonder what I was talking about. So I'm going to have a larger amplitude there. So now this, and we'll just cross this one out so you don't have to look at it anymore. All right, so these two waves have around the same amplitude. Nobody cares. Um, but this one has a small wavelength. This one has a large wavelength. We said here 
that it is a greater path difference, which would correspond to a uh, the same number of wavelengths for a longer or larger wavelength. So the green light will turn yellow, then orange, then red. Green light turns yellow, then orange, then red. Then orange, then red. Ta-da! And that is fun stuff with dispersion. I hope you had fun with that. If you have questions, please ask me when we are together in person. Until then, have a great day. Don't break the laws of physics.